What's up, broods and broodettes? It's the Pico Dudes! I'm Jeremy Hidalgo, and with me is the host that always has something in the chamber, Sam Rather. Looper was a better movie. <laughs> why, would, <laughs> why would you say that? <laughs> Time Cop was better. All right. Hi, Jeremy. It is great to be here today. I'm sorry if I'm a little loud, but I'm enjoying all of our beers today. All good, man. I got auto levels on, and your beers are really good today. My goodness, what happened? I went from worst to first, even though it was only a group of one. It's the Pico Brew. It's the Pico Brew. And that's not actually true. It's no. also you. No. You, you figured out fermentation. You've been on this like beer journey, pilgrimage, if you will, mm. learning all about the different styles and how to yeah. brew it. And we took you from like just liking the Garden of the Hose I mean, Ho Garden beers yes. to um, experimenting with everything. And now I hear you might be a hophead. I'm turning into one, I think. And here's the thing. I, you know when, when I was in high school? Yeah, I know totally about you that. Know, you know, okay. Uh, grunge was really big. We even sell this, this Pearl Jam and Nirvana, I think it was. Nirvana and, and, and Sound Garden. It's pronounced Nirvana. <laughs> Nirvana. <clears throat> um, and they're really big. And I wasn't really into it, right? And then a few years later, I started getting into it, and I'm like, oh my god, have you guys heard this? And I was like, um, that was so 1992, where were you? And uh, and so I feel that way about beer. Like, I'm getting into this hoppy, um, these American pale ales, and all that, right when everyone's going, oh, yeah, we're sick of this. We're moving on to hazy IPAs. Yes, yeah, <laughs> so we're moving on to hazy, which I also love, so that's yeah. all right. But um, I do, I feel like I'm a little behind, but I'm enjoying my journey. It's kind of like Oregon Trail. I, I, what? Jimmy died of... Like dysentery water, or water snake <laughs> bites water snake or water bites. moccasins or something. Oh my gosh. I want an Oregon trail about brewing beer. You tried to ford the river and you lost your whole batch. You attempted to force carbonate. <laughs> it blew up in your face and killed your wife. Oh um, <laughs> that's, a, that's really bad brewing. You went dark man on that stuff. Um, but no, it was, uh, this is fun and I am so happy I'm on this journey. I'm glad you're on it with me, but uh, we're, we're, trying another brew today yeah and i think this is my fifth in a row i'm gonna do something you always do to me before we get to that do you want to talk about the announcement the pico brew made like yesterday about the fact that they're gonna i be... want to but i didn't see it yet <laughs> oh well then let me let me i've been so busy let me tell you all right <clears throat> tell, so tell me so I'm there's gonna... they are <gasps> releasing the ability to add your own ingredients to the to the C, Pico, to yeah, the like you, to you, just, you just order a pack of five of your own malt bins and your own hop bins, and then you can go to the homebrew store after you program in your recipe, and you can fill those full of your ingredients and make your own recipe. Are you are you cereal right now? Totally cereal. So you can literally start like like a mini zymatic almost. Yes, you can really try. Any style of beer that your homebrew store can support. Correct. Whatever grains you want. It's like it's like freestyle, but with... I'm going to need a napkin. <laughs> and some lotion. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Lo I have baby smooth hands. No lotion needed um, for brewing. My hands are calloused yeah. from years of manliness. <laughs> what? I don't know what that means. So that's a... I... I'm floored. I hope you're not like late April foolsing me because that completely changes these machines for us. No, I'm dead serious. I mean, I, I think the infusion was kind of the first step towards that with the Pico uh, U, U and then also the infusion upgrade that you could do for the Pico C's yep. and S's. And um, yeah, now now you're able to add your own grains and, and build your own recipes. And I, I think they were a little vague a little bit on exactly how the the you know you would lay that out. In whether it's going to be in an app or you program it in, or maybe I just didn't read the email all the way. Um, but everybody's excited about it. Everybody's stoked, including me. Um, wow. And now I think you. And that and opens you... up a lot of opportunities for for everything. It does. I don't know how they're going to do it, but that is really exciting. Um, hopefully it comes with a revised step filter. Maybe one that actually has a filter that doesn't break. Yeah, I mean, I think they're they're single use uh, containers still. Oh, they are single use. Okay. Yeah, so so you're able to buy. So it still goes in your standard step filter, of which 
uh, I don't know if I've told you, I can't brew right now. No, you didn't tell me. Why, why, why so? Why Pico not? brew down. No, oh. so here's what's down. Your step filter has that handy little filter in the... The fin... Dealer the fin dealer. Yeah. So mine, I had a fin bust off a few brews ago, and then uh, a couple of brews later, I had a second fin bust off. So this last time, after I finished uh, what we'll hopefully try in a week or two here with the honey lager, Rocky Raccoon's honey lager, um, I push it in to rinse it out like I normally do, mm-hmm. and all the fins just bust off, and it just falls apart. So I don't know if it was high temperatures. I don't know if maybe it was... I'm using just those standard dishwasher cleaning things um, but I have been doing a deep clean in between each brew. Doesn't um, seem like that should affect it. I, that, that's a kind of a weird deal because I do that every time I brew. And I've got, I don't know the exact number, but I'm probably eking close to 30 mm-hmm. brews on my machine. And I have never had a fin break or anything. So I don't know what happened to mine. Uh, Pico Brew is going to be awesome, of course, and send me a new one. I haven't told him yet, but I... I I know, so we talked to Joshua already, right? and he actually said, I believe he said, they keep a library of the pictures that everyone sends in so that people don't send in the same picture more than once and get a right. whole bunch of free ones. Yeah, um, They're absolutely willing to replace it if it actually breaks. Okay. Um, they've been super cool about that with everyone so far. I wonder if it has to do with like the batch of plastic or something, because again, I, I've done the thing that's ill-advised. Like you, You've popped it out. I just take the whole thing out and I yeah. rinse it out every time. I, I, I know that everybody's... You know, on the By the way, the only reason and... not to is because of that little grommet seal thing, right? Well, the O-ring. Yeah. The O-ring. And, and I use a toothpick, which is made yeah. out of wood, and I don't stab the O-ring itself. I slide it underneath. Oh, that's probably good. Yeah. And, and I use a steak knife. You use a steak knife. Is it, does it have any other uses? <laughs> um, <laughs> like cutting steak? Cutting steak. Um, so you, you do it the right way. Um, you know, I... I, I Joshua's yeah. boss. I'm, I'm lost for a second. Help me out. Oh, um, oh, you said you're lost, and now I can't remember. Uh, Great guy. Doug, Douglas. Douglas. White. Douglas White. So he has come out and said, look, if you do what we've told you not to do, and you choose to take out the filter completely to clean it, etc., and you do happen to damage that O-ring, here's a place that sells them by the hundred... <laughs> And they're not very expensive, and just buy a bunch, and you'll be fine. Wasn't it like Ace Hardware or something? It was really, yeah. It was, here's the part number, here's what you do. So yeah. they're a standard off-the-shelf product, um, so you shouldn't be afraid of taking that thing out and cleaning it, as long as you're handy enough to push an O-ring on. <laughs> and if you're not, you probably shouldn't be operating a Pico Brew. <laughs> yes, Agreed. So, anyways, but that doesn't help you out if the fins break. I mean, no, the fins breaking was what made me sad, is I had a fin break, I had a second fin break, and then, like I said, the whole thing just kind of disintegrated right there on me, and I was, oh. You know, I got a buddy who owns a machine shop. I wonder if we could just send him the, the piece and see if he can make one out of... Um, metal? Metal. Stainless. <laughs> Tubes. <laughs> Tubes. And glass. <laughs> uh, oh, Wolverine, God. you're fired. I um, love YouTube. Metal. I, I, I've I, wondered the same thing, because I know there's a cost component, but gosh, it sure seems... And I, hope, I wonder if it's a heat component or something, but making out of metal sure seems like it would be a... Yeah, a, a foolproof way of making sure it doesn't break all the time. <laughs> yeah, especially if you do something like stainless where it's not going to rust. And, yeah, you know, or, it's or not affect as, your beer. Yeah, it's not as affected by like the the expanding and contracting from heat. So, mm-hmm. anyways, you brewed a beer. Uh, a, I brewed a, a rather, beer, a rather good one because <laughs> we've taken to what, like what? tasting them before we get into the the podcast and. That way, we're not fumbling around with the beer flavor map, trying to figure out what we're tasting while we're tasting it. I took zero notes. You took zero notes? I know. With, dude, there's not a... Like, this is a really good beer, but there's not a lot of it's complexity. It's not super complex. No. <laughs> so, no. Um, so, you brewed a Schwartz beer. Schwartz beer. No, Schwartz is strong in this beer. So, who's Schwartz? Beer. <laughs> Did you brew? I brewed uh, a Berificio. Italiano's Schwartz beer. Wow, that seems a little bit different than I was expecting because you just that, that sounded Italian. It sure sounded Italian, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Schwartz beer is a 
German, German beer. Yeah. Well, it's okay because a couple episodes ago we did Strassenbrau, which was a German brewery, brewery yeah. doing an American <laughs> uh, uh, pale ale. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So this is an Italian brewery. Um, they've been around a long time. They've been around since 1996. Yeah. Um, and so so they, long. Well, <laughs> you know, and honestly, for Italy, that probably isn't long. If that was here in Washington State, that's like beating Red Hook for... Being, sure, sure. Well, I guess not 96, but um, it would beat a lot of these other breweries out for being around the longest. Right. Um, so, uh, and and I went to try and, and find uh, some stuff about them. Of course, uh, their main website's in Italian, but they have English translations for a lot of stuff. Let me just put it this way. They are really focused on... Um, the whole idea of doing beer, not necessarily in a traditional way. Um, and by traditional, I mean like the bigger breweries do it, mm -hmm. but uh, they focus on uh, what they call um, free. And it, it means free of both traditional things. Um, and when I say traditional, it's a hey, traditional characteristics, traditional, this is the way you're supposed to make this type of beer. And they get into, Hey, we want to make what we like, what we enjoy. We don't mind if it breaks some of the old rules. Right. Um, they like a, a clean beer, no stabilizers, no clarifying agents, no, none of the extra things that you might add to a beer. They feel that if you do brew your beer correctly, you don't need any of those things. Sure. And I, I think... As homebrewers, I think we would agree. I think we would. And in fact, I have yet to use any clarifying agents in my beer. Um, I thought about it and I said, you know what? I, I, I don't care if it's super clear looking. In fact, Hazy's coming into style. So yeah, yeah. there's me. I'll, I'll get into Hazy in about eight years. Don't worry. Well, good news. All our beers are sort of Hazy. They pretty much are. Um, but they had a statement that I really liked. They said the, the, it, the value of a beer is only equal to the pleasure it can give. Oh, that's neat. That's the only measurement you need. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to worry about how beautiful it looks or what the ABVs or IBUs. No, the value of it is only equal to the pleasure it can give. Mm. Um, so hopefully this beer can give us some pleasure. It, it's giving me pleasure. So this is a Barificio Italiano's and it's called Negretto. And uh, Negretto, of course, uh, going back to that idea of it's a Schwartz beer, a black <clears throat> beer. And... Right. Um, did you already describe what the heck a Schwartz beer is? I didn't because I thought you were going to, but no, I do have it pulled up right here. I think it was right baseballs. <laughs> May the Schwartz be with you. So Schwartz beer or black beer is a dark lager made in Germany. They tend to have an opaque... Or Italy. <laughs> or Italy, yeah. Um, they tend to... Well, you know, it's funny you say that they like they want to break all the rules, but the, as like I read through this and I'm like, they freaking nailed it. They nailed it. exactly what <laughs> this, this beer is. is. There's no roots, rules broken here. Like, Other than they're like, we're not doing this in Germany. We're going next door. <laughs> yeah. They're like, uh, they, they tend to have an opaque black color with hints of chocolate or coffee flavors, which is funny because as soon as I tasted this, I was like, oh my gosh, coffee and molasses. Yeah. Uh, and then we, we were like, and like... Sam goes chocolate and I'm like, well, yeah, chocolate. And, and then you said something like, what's that? What's that horrible chocolate that's horrible, unrefined? Bitter, sweet, unrefined <laughs> cacao. Yeah. And I was like cacao because my wife and I did this smoothie is cacao thing. cacao how and... you pronounce it? Or is that just how Archer says cool things? Cacao. Cacao. Um, I don't know. Cacao. <laughs> All right. But cacao, um, cacao, whatever it's called. Sure. However you say it. That's Caco. what it, it's, it's, we would define it as horrible chocolate. If we, you, we, <laughs> what, what is cacao? Oh, it's horrible If chocolate. you have it by itself, you're like, what the hell is this? No, no. I've had it. In that first instant, you're like, Mm, oh, what the <laughs> heck just happened? Because there's that, oh, this is sweet, and no, it's horribly bitter and wrong. Yes. Well, you get a little bit of that with this beer, but but really that, that horribly bitter and wrong part doesn't really ever occur. I don't um, think you get the wrong. Um, but yeah, I'll talk about the measurements in yeah. a second. So typically these are around 5% ABV. They're similar to a stout in that they are made from roasted malt, which gives mm -hmm. it the dark yes. color. Um a couple of characteristics is that they're made using cool fermentation method, um, though. Cool his... fermentation methods? I wish I knew those. Yeah. <laughs> so you put sunglasses on your carboy? I don't know. So is it cool fermentation? Because I'm guessing it's bottom fermented because it's using a lager yeast. Yeah, it classes them as a lager. Okay. Um, with, though historically warm fermentation was used, uh, so the alcohol content you know, you, ranges from 4.1 to 5 
and they get their dark color from the use of particularly dark, particularly dark malts. Um, I, I, you know, if if you want to get into the history of this, do we? You know what? We got nothing but time, right? Are you in traffic? Enjoy. <laughs> so the roots of the Schwartz beer lie in Thuringia and Saxony. The oh, oldest yeah. known black beer is the. I'm gonna butcher this, but it's the Braunschweiger Mumi. Mummy. Or, or the Brunswick Mum. <laughs> Brewed since the Middle Ages. The, Someone's the, got an Oedipus complex over there. The first document. The, the first, Brunswick Mum. <laughs> oh, Mum. And Mummy. The, Bruins, the, the first document. Uh, that cannot talk. It was first brewed in 1390 <laughs> as... Uh, That's probably the first documented brewing. In Braunschweig. Right? Yeah, something like that. Braunschweig. The earliest documented mention in Thuring- Thuringia is of Kostreiser Brewery from 1543, a brewery which later 1543? started... 1543? That's even older than Brufficiano Italiano. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> from 1996. <laughs> yes. Um, so... Uh, they got them beat by a year or two. They still, the, that brewery still produces Schwartz beer today. Really? Yeah. The present. See, when you're in Europe, that's an old brewery. You, you got to have a few hundred years to you. Yeah. Who, who, whoever gets a chance to visit a brewery that's been around since 1390? <laughs> Not us. Now we have a mission. Yeah. Well, that's, that's one sad thing about America is like we talk about history in, in the hundreds of years. It, we talk about it in the decades or some of years at times. 1996 was so long ago. <laughs> I know, geez. I was like 16. Grunge was just fading out. <laughs> so, um, anyways, you know, that's uh, some of the examples are like Samuel Adams Black Lager, New Belgium's 1554 Black Lager, and Zingu Black. Um, and that's 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 what I got. So New Belgium beer. has a analog to this beer, also. Yeah, New Belgium Brewing, you rascals, you. We should have we should have ordered scallions. ordered those on. We should have them up at like Bevmo or something and tried it a little bit. Yeah. I still I still think for sure the uh, the Negretto that you you did is going to be better than than the the Belgian and the the Belgian. Pale ale that we had in the previous episode was definitely better than the Fat Tire. Oh, bang it out! Yeah, yeah. and Fat Tire, you know, great beer, very good for a mass-produced uh, uh, Belgian ale. But man, bang it out, rocked. Yeah, agreed. Now I want to go try bang it out at Ravenna because I don't remember ever trying bang it out at Ravenna Brewing. Or, or maybe I did and didn't pay attention. Uh, exactly, because we didn't know we were going to do this podcast a year later. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, um, anyways. Uh, w- what do you got? You you went through. What were your brew notes on this? You know, uh, so this one's going to be a little higher alcohol, and I brewed it exactly as it's intended. But ABVs come out to six point five, so it's got a little bit more alcohol yeah. than the standard Schwarz beer. Um, IBUs. Does it give you an IBU range for a black beer? Um, it did, and I just switched it off. But it did. No, it didn't. I'm it sorry. didn't. I don't remember hearing one. No. Uh, I this went was... to a different web page that doesn't give me as much information. <laughs> <laughs> but it was in English, so <laughs> yeah. win. Um, <laughs> IBUs on this beer are 50, 50, which is on a dark beer is a pretty good um, IBU. Uh, that adds some bite. I don't know. Are you Are you getting any bite there? Um, I think one way to describe what I'm tasting is uh, I, I do get an initial hint of coffee and molasses. There's that cacao slash horrible chocolate in there. Um, is it, and that's that's the bittering. It, it reminds me, it's yeah. analogous to like having a uh, like a bitter espresso. I was going to say um, bitter or even slightly burnt for yeah. me. I'm getting almost burnt. Like if you have an espresso that's a little bit on the acidy side yeah. for an after finish. Yeah. And I think that's a result of the fact that you said you dry hopped this one. Yeah. Um, so Which was weird. I was like, I'm dry hopping this dark <laughs> beer. You said hopping, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I want to keep drinking it. If there is another option to that word, <laughs> it was over clothes. <laughs> oh god, uh, it was over glass. I'm gonna take oh, another drink anyway. Dry, ah, <laughs> pig. <laughs> this beer, but it felt weird throwing my. <laughs> sorry, my ears are slurring your words. <laughs> my dry hops into as I open it up and I see this 
dark wart. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to dry hump this. <laughs> can you be, can you enunciate more clearly? <laughs> I, will tr- I will try to enunciate as clearly as possible. There you go. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so, so you dry hop this one. Any special f- fermentation <laughs> methods or anything that you have on here? <laughs> No, no, you know, and I've, uh, I've mentioned in previous episodes, um, moving to the buckets to ferment yeah. so that I can keep brews going, especially going to Hawaii. I wanted to get six or eight brews going and, and have them ready. You're carrying this podcast right now because of that. Ah, I, I, I hear you. I've got a couple more to go. So, um, I, I use the bucket. It took, cause my only measurement in the bucket, cause my Pico firm does not attach to my <laughs> plastic white two Pico gallon brew, Can you bucket. work on a bucket attachment for yes. that, please? And uh, so I had the bucket, and so I just have the airlock, and I'm watching my bubs. And this one, a couple weeks, uh, which was longer than the other brews. I started it first. I went over probably four days or so, Mm -hmm. five days of brewing. Um, And I started it first, and it was my last one that I went to bottle. Okay. Uh, and, uh, I don't know if it's cause it was a lager yeast, it's Could a bottom be. fermenting yeast, but it just had activity for a longer time than, um, I had expected originally. I've noticed that happens quite often on the darker beers mm. and especially once you start creeping up in the alcohol mm-hmm. content, because, you know, especially like if you're using a lager yeast, it takes a little bit longer to ferment. You're doing a little bit cooler temperatures, yep. um, but you have a higher sugar level in to start with. So so it takes the yeast a while to kind of work through that. I think we we both found that out kind of with the Denny Con, and then um, it was again present when I did my ten second car saison, um, which I would almost like. I, I'm looking back fondly on that beer. I would almost. Are you really? I would almost bump the. Uh, I might try. I might try and mess with that recipe and make okay. it better. Okay, I thought you were about to bump up your score, and I'm like, this is the ex girlfriend that now you're drunk and thinking about calling. No. I miss you so much, 10-second car. <laughs> we were so good together. This is why families end up with multiple kids, because they forget about the oh, fact that, oh. like, all the stuff you go through and the pregnancy and, like, mm. you have fond memories of things it, it, often. The human body is amazingly good at blocking out bad memories. Yeah. And only focusing on the good parts. Like, maybe you really... I think beer is a major contributor to that. (laughs) It could be. It could be. So, uh, fond memory. So, you you were talking about going back to the 10 sec. Uh, No, that's okay. We can move on. Um, So, I think I've described kind of what what this tastes like. Uh, Do we want to... Do you want to hear what you think it tastes like? You know, I, I think that it matches the style very closely. Not a style I'm super into. I... I feel, and I don't know if I did something wrong or if this was exactly what's intended. I get burnt (laughs) when I smell it. I get burnt. If you've ever brewed coffee the old way Mm -hmm. and you had just a little bit of coffee left and you left it in there and the hot plate was still on and you got a little burn there, that aroma is what I'm getting. And not necessarily in a bad way, but when you do that, it does create a bitterness. Yeah. And I feel like I'm getting that on the nose. I feel like I'm getting it on the flavor. So I, I'm getting that a little bit. I, I'd say the 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 burnt. That's kind of where I pick up that molasses taste, right? Molasses is sweet, but it has a very strong, pungent initial um, flavor profile. Yeah. And and that's kind of how I feel this is. And that's that's something that kind of sticks with you throughout the beer, but. For me, I like dark beers. I I drink my coffee black. I'll drink espresso straight. Um, It's something for me that's enjoyable. I would take this, you know... um, I like my coffee like I like my beer. (laughs) Schwartz. (laughs) Schwartz. Uh, Anyways, uh, this is really good, man. So you're enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I I don't know that I'm enjoying it quite as much as the the last beer that we reviewed, which is the... uh, the the bang in bang it out bang it out from Ravenna Brewing sounds awesome that was such a good beer dude they're five point two miles away we could swing over and I try think, it out I think we need to and uh, this beer from from a star rating scale uh, I think I'm at like a three point two five maybe a three and a half yeah um 
it nails the style. It's a it's a style of beer I enjoy. Uh, beers like the Dragon's Tooth Stout, I think, rank much higher for me. The Denny Con Porter. Um, I feel... I'll let you finish. Uh, so, I, I'm finished. I was going to say, I feel on the mouthfeel, mm-hmm. it's thinner than I want it to be. Yeah. I want it to be a little thicker. Maybe if I served it on nitro or something, it would give it a different mouthfeel. But the mouthfeel is thinner than my initial nose, my initial taste tell me it should be. Yeah. Um, it kind of flattens out after you're, you've got that first impact to your taste buds which is all this like molasses and cacao and whatever there's a quick hit of bitter and then it just kind of it's just mellow yeah and you're just kind of sitting there going okay anything else anything else no maybe a little acidy flavor it's it's pretty basic it's like a starbucks espresso shot like it's it's you know you'll go drink one um, if you like espresso shots and there's a I Starbucks sh- nearby, which in out. Seattle, there's one, yeah, I, I'm having We've a hard got time two on every corner. Um, but like if I want a really good espresso, espresso shot, there's other places I will go because they have coffees that offer you a much more bolder flavor with a much more smoother flavor profile yep. throughout. And, and I think that's the best thing I could equate this one to, um, I'm not saying I wouldn't buy this as a Pico pack and brew it. And I don't know if I'd mess around with it too much. Although Denny Khan's got me thinking about adding, you know, adding stuff like, you know, not just vanilla and bourbon to everything, but figuring out what else you can add to it. Maybe we should throw some cacao powder in here and just kick it up a (laughs) notch. Cacao. (laughs) Cacao. That's going to be our new emerald. Cacao. (laughs) Bam. Cacao in your face. Um, Yeah. It is it, straight up. I would drink a Denny Con over this. Oh, hands down. And the reason I wanted to brew this, uh, we mentioned in the NB30 episode mm-hmm. that we've talked to a lot of the people at Pico Brew. We've talked about what some of their favorite packs are, not what the most ordered packs are, right? But what the people there, some of their favorite packs. And the Negretto came up multiple times, three or four times, um, it came up second most behind the NB30. Sure. Which is why I said, I have to try this beer. Um, I think I did it pretty much right on point and on style. You nailed it. Um, it's when I tasted it. Is I'm like, oh, that's a good beer. But one, not my style, the yeah. darker beers. Um, and And two, I've had darker beers I think are better. So both those together, I'm in that three to three and a half. I mean, I'd give it, if we can, three and a quarter, if yep. that's an allowed uh, score. Um, it's right there at the top of the, I will absolutely drink it until it's gone. Yeah. But it's right just below the, I'm going to go and order another pack of it. Yeah. It, it reminds me. So I've had the Sam Adams, you know, the black lager. And I've had, I think there's a Guinness black lager. And it could well. be because of the lager style instead of being a stout <clears throat> reporter. Yeah. And, and I've had those. And I feel exactly the same about this as I do those. Again, I think you nailed the style. I think from our perspective, it's not necessarily, you know, in our, in our preferred type of beer. I mean, yeah. it's just not what we what we typically like. So, you want to play some SRM game? I'd say thirty four, thirty seven, forty two, forty two. You're so good at this. The answer to everything is forty two. The, the, the life, the universe. I should have given you a hint. <laughs> if Doug Adams was, <laughs> may he rest in peace, giving this beer an SRM score, <laughs> what would it be? You nailed it. Forty two. Yeah. So, um, great beer. So before we go, a couple things coming up. Uh, we do live here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, my understanding is we got a little event coming up in June. Oh, the Craft Brewer Festival. Do you say Craft Brewer? <laughs> <laughs> this is too much beer. I, you know, I'm going to drink the remainder of this bottle so you don't have to. Thanks. Um, I'm not sure what I think. These have been good like beers. The Brewers Fest. This has been excellent. Yeah. It's like the Craft Brewers Festival or something. It's Marymore Park on June 15th. Like, dude, I cannot talk right your, now. Your lips have abandoned you. Luckily, I just have to go upstairs. Um, For what? What's going on? No, I mean to get, like, home. <laughs> my, my, Are you not home? Well, I am home, but my commute is upstairs. Um, so, um, 
Yeah, we are actually the Washington Brewers Festival. That's it. Will be held um, from 4 p.m. to 9:30 p.m. on June 15th at Marymore Park in Redmond, Washington. Awesome. So we're planning to go. We are. We are hoping that we will have by that point of time a little bit of swag. So you might see us walking around in our Pico Dudes shirts. Yeah. Make us easy to see. And we might. Do we do we want to maybe have a handful that if anybody reaches out and says, hey, I'd love to show up in a Pico Dude shirt that we might share with them? Yeah. I think um, let's work out the details on that. We'll post it on our Facebook page. So if you throw us a... By the, way, by the time this airs, I bet you this festival will be over. No. Nope, I'm bombarding the podcast. We have four other episodes to air before this one. Five. This is our fifth. Well, yes. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. This is five total. And uh, I will be posting them all in a flurry. And this is why. Because I think we should do a little bit of a giveaway. If you like our page, subscribe to our page, and you give us a review on Apple iTunes. Give us a review. Then Wh- Whatever we- the score. We will pick, I don't know, how many? Two, one, three, five, four. How many shirts do we want to give away? I give out five. Let's give out five. We'll give away five shirts. If uh, just and we're gonna make a random, so you don't have to say anything nice, but yeah. just tell us how we're doing because we we have gotten some feedback from people, but we would like to get some on the iTunes. Hopefully, if you're enjoying. And, and simply by giving us a review, we can attract more people to our hobby, yeah. more Pico Brewers to our Picoverse. And more con- more home brewers to the Pico Brew. Absolutely. <laughs> so, do you know that's Father's Day weekend? It is Father's Day weekend. Yeah, yeah. So, um, if you're interested, uh, raise a glass with us on Father's Day weekend. Uh, we're going to go to the Washington Beer Commission. It's going to present their 13th annual Washington Brewers Festival at Marymore Park. Um, it's an all-ages place, so bring the kids if you want. Yeah. Thousands of beer aficionados, more than 500 beers from over 100 Washington breweries. It's funny. I recommend... Funny. It's fun. I recommend bringing a pretzel necklace because you get to try a lot of beers. What is a pretzel necklace? Well, I think it's self-explanatory. It's like a necklace made of pretzels. And you eat (laughs) said pretzels. So you like thread uh, something through like uh, 50 pretzels, little pretzels. And then you can just, like a candy necklace that our yeah. kids eat. Yeah, exactly. Or you could thread like one thing that through is, like a big necklace. That is but genius. The, the idea is that you eat them so it helps your stomach cope with all the beers you're trying. Um, all right, all right. Anyways. So it looks like this might be going uh, uh, all weekend, potentially. I will be there one day. I will be too. Uh, and so please note. If you come on Friday, June 15th, that is 21 and over only. No minors. It's 25 bucks for early bird tickets. If you buy them, oh, never mind. That's today. Um, $30 for your tickets online. 35 at the door. You get a cool little tasting glass, and that comes with eight uh, four-ounce tasting tokens. If you come on Saturday or Sunday, the 16th or 17th, that's all ages. And people under 21 get in free. So there'll be a lot of stuff for the kids to do. Again, the price is $30 online or $35 yep. at the door. And you, again, get your uh, souvenir tasting glass and eight four-ounce tasting tokens. So hell of a deal. Yeah. I've noticed the more beer you drink, the less you care about what your kids are doing. Like They could, <laughs> they could just be running around like crazy people, and you're okay with it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not by any means insinuating you don't be a good parent and make sure that they don't like go stick their head in a donut yeah. fryer or something in one of the food trucks. But I am saying that, you know, you get to take it a little bit easier because beer mellows you out a bit. Absolutely. If you are 21 and over and you're willing to be a designated driver, your admission is only five dollars. Yeah. So that's awesome. And it doesn't end driver just for the people who came with you, by the way. You don't have yeah. to do it for random people. <laughs> um, <laughs> Start an Uber. And I like what they do because it is a family oriented. So Saturday, Sunday, you get your eight tastings. You can buy three additional tastings for five bucks and you will be capped there. They will not sell you additional tastings past that because they want people to be responsible. Friday, adults only day, you can go nuts. Please drink responsibly, but you can't go nuts. There will be no limit on additional tastings on Friday. Nice. Um, And that is an adults-only event. So that's it. We hope to run into you guys there. Um, Be a great event. And are we ever going to get together as Pico Brewers? Yes, we are. We are working it out with uh, Joshua from Pico Brewers. Josh Bennett. Joshua Bennett. And um, 
we are kind of trying to work out the dates. We've got hectic schedules throughout the summer, um, although they're going to yeah, be... Yeah, we're f- way busier than you guys. Well, we're we're freeing up a little bit after after the 4th of July holiday, yep. so we'll be targeting some get-together dates after that. Yeah, probably um, late July or sometime in August, yeah. and, and the weather will be good. We'll do something big outdoors. Yep. And it's going to be, we're hoping... It's going to be kind of a share your brew. Would you would you call it bottle share? Bottle share. Bottle share. Bottle share. And and we would love, by the way, an opportunity f- to a million dollars. Well, that plus the opportunity <laughs> to drink some of the brews made by some of our we Pico Brewer drink community. Your beer so bad. Also, we can get more of these podcasts out now. With that being said, you will see a flurry of podcasts for, from us. Um, this will be the last one, but you'll be going, oh my gosh, I just saw five more podcasts so like in a week. many podcasts. But that's because we just talked about the Washington Brewers Festival, and um, I got to get that out. And You know we could record just a snippet and put it in front of one of our other podcasts. Nah, let's just post all five of these. Let's bury people in Pico Dudes. Bury people in Pico Dudes. Pico Dude pile. (laughs) All right, man. Well, uh, I think we got to wrap this up. We probably should. It's getting late. You guys are great. It's been fun having you. That's Pico a, dudes. Oh, was that cool? Do you like it? I'm I a like poet and I know it. Yeah. I, I, I did. It was not intentional. It just kind of happens sometimes. <laughs> All right, man. Well, Pico dudes say late. <laughs> late. Pico dudes out. <laughs>Reach reached the end of another episode of the Pico Dudes podcast. Connect with us at picodudes.com, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And if you enjoyed our show, we'd love for you to subscribe, rate, and give us a review wherever you listen to your podcasts, but mostly iTunes. Also, if you want a code that will help give you some discounts off the Pico Brew equipment, Z150D equals $150 off of the Z series. Pro, P-R-O, 125D gives you $125 off of the Pico Pro. And C75D gets you $75 off of your purchase of a Pico C. We hope you enjoy listening. Look forward to hearing from you. Pico Dudes, out.